welcome to the Up and Down Show with Daniel and Upendo. Hello, happy, hello. Happy, happy February. Happy, happy, happy <laughs> February. <laughs> we actually don't play in these things. <laughs> One day we're actually going to know what the hell we do when the camera actually goes. goes and, and we say, on your mark, you say, <laughs> no, we're going to say, a one, one and a two, two and, and you know what to do. <laughs> Which is funny because that comes from the movie Ma Rainey. Yeah, that's also funny because we talked about it on the previous episode, so I'm sorry. She's just, no, but she's I, I'm bringing it up from the context that this show is about black History. She told me I could introduce the show. <laughs> I had a whole way I was going to do it. She literally, before the cameras rolled, she said, Daniel, you're going to do this, right? And I was like, all right. And she knows I'm spontaneous. I go into my improv mode. And I'm ready to, like, tease you guys, surprise you. Thanks, Yupenda. Hey, Daniel. Happy, happy Black History Month. <laughs> oh, hey, my Daniel. God, with friends like us. <laughs> This is me giving you my my, my puppy dog eyes. Hey, <laughs> but serious. Why don't we try it again? Why don't you introduce it? Uh, no, absolutely not. We do not plan this. We do not. We, don't. we do not. Um, we we improvise. That's what the show is about. It so is. happy um, Black History Month. Yes. And for today, we are just celebrating. Um, yes. We the last episode, at least uh, the last episode we filmed, we're yes. probably going to be producing some of these things out of order, just yes. because we're trying to get the most urgent and topical things out to you guys um, soon. We yes. do film these still um, in clusters, just because of the um, challenge of actually sitting down here and doing it. Yes, people it, don't know how hard it is to be us. <laughs> It's very hard to be us, yes. But, but but in 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 real seriousness, it is a challenge to put everything together, to plan, and so that's right. We do things in clusters. Mm -hmm. If we could do a weekly show and have everything set, ready to go, and and ready to push it out to you all, we would have did a long time ago. Right. So we are easy. looking for executive producers who are willing to back the show and are willing to help us realize our dreams. All executive right? producer, <laughs> you've been there yesterday, actually. <laughs> you guys are being so wonderful and giving us great yes. feedback. And somebody um, said, wow, I just love your energy. You guys are my favorite podcast. And Upenda says, damn it, we need to be on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true, or NBC, or Fox, <laughs> or Netflix. I'll, I'll just do YouTube steadily. Okay? <laughs> Any of those would do, but it's true. It's true. We get a lot of feedback from people who just say they love our energy, Daniel. What is that about that energy? I don't know. I think it is just about, um, I was going to be funny, but actually the truth of the matter is I just think it's about our honesty. It's about our love yes. for one another, our respect yes. for one another. And also she drives me freaking crazy too. And y'all can see that oh sometimes. Oh my goodness. Don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me tell you what I did this morning for this man. Oh my goodness, go for it. I made him black history <gasps> breakfast. Oh, she did, <laughs> did y'all. She did. And you know, usually I make breakfast yes. for you. And I was laying up in my bed today and I had a rough sleep last night. I was up and down, he couldn't snored. sleep. I was snoring this morning. <laughs> and she came in and Yupenda has a way of getting people to do things for her by batting her eyes and using a little humor. She slid into the bed next to me. And then she's like, Do you want some breakfast? And then she says, Well, I could make something for you and that's usually my cue to say no 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 I got it I got it and today I said okay I'm like damn it she's like well I got some um vegan sausages for you I said fantastic sounds good he hurry sure up did. he sure did I was like damn it damn it so, uh, but yeah we are celebrating Black History yes. Month with one another and with you all today yes. and we are just going to celebrate today and so let's get started with that and um you know I, I was thinking you put the just um in celebrating Black History month that as children we didn't celebrate black history month Do you know, when did it start no we black did i remember in being in school in february at what was, age um i can remember probably back to when i was in first grade or second grade celebrating really? uh -huh. black history i remember specifically I, w I went to um uh oak ridge because i was in yeah seven yeah second grade or maybe fifth grade, I remember, because okay. it was Oak Ridge in fifth grade. And I remember when February came, the class pod, we were in pods, we decorated with all of the traditional historical black history names, the Martin Luther King, Rosa mm -hmm. Parks, 
you know, the 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 standard for Black History Month. And I remember decorating our pod. In first grade. No, no, no. This is fifth grade. Fifth, fifth grade. grade. Okay. Well, that's about more because I, I was thinking it was in. So when we were in fifth grade, it's like 1952. <laughs> was that right? Actually, it was like in the 80s. No, I, no, no. Fifth grade would have been uh, 79 okay. for me. Okay. Okay. I don't think so, unless you were a brilliant <laughs> child. We, I'm doing a show with Miss Doogie Hauser. <laughs> Let's see. Wait, wait. So you start in three, fifth grade is when you start kindergarten. First grade is six. So you go first to, what did you just say, fifth grade? Yeah. So four more years. So about 10. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, you're right. About 10. <laughs> About ten, maybe nine. Actually, okay, no, you're, you're good. I don't. <laughs> Doogie Howser. Oh on my set. god, we're gonna. Have, should we just start the show? Over? Yes. Yeah, Doogie Howser <laughs> is on set now. No, I, I remember it because again, and it was um, my teacher at the time was Bill Thompson, and he is one of those teachers who always just just had a love for me, and he gave me like the direction, like okay, I need you to get all the kids together, like. Round them up, you pinda. We're gonna be, you know, putting Black History. I remember that he he. We decorated our pod with Black History. That's really interesting because I don't have a distinct memory, and maybe I'm also confusing when um when MLK Day became a holiday. Okay. Now that was in the '80s. That was actually under Reagan. I yes, believe. yes. And was, you, what senator did not sign on for that holiday? What senator did not sign on? He was the only senator that didn't do it. That didn't sign on for the uh, holiday. So it had to have been, uh, I would would imagine, someone in the GOP, I would imagine. um, And I I would say, no, um, I would say that it was um, a white man. (laughs) 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 Give me a hint. Yes, give me a hint. Well, yes, he's a white man. Yes, I... I, I, He he, he passed away in 20... 18, I believe. Not, not, um, I, my brain's not working this morning, so. That's normal. Yeah. <laughs> but not, not, um, the gentleman from Arizona. Yes. Really? Yep. John McCain. John was, McCain didn't sign on for MLK. Yes. Though. He's the only senator that stood out when they passed the legislation to make it Martin Luther King. Did he have day? a reason for that? Or was it? Like, I don't know if it was a reason, but he was the only one who didn't. Which is interesting now because in sort of the landscape of what's going on in politics, yes. John McCain is more of an ally with things around. Around, um, diversity, uh, diversity and, and, and bipartisan. Yes. You know, he's not with us anymore, but his wife is carrying on his legacy yes, yes. and his daughter carrying on his legacy. She gets a bad rap over there on The View. Could yes. you imagine? I, I, we're going all over the place, but that's okay. <laughs> um, that's what that's what our friendship is. All over, uh, the place. all over the place. But she gets a bad rap on The View. I think she's the only conservative no, voice. It. She, you think so? Yes. Megan, Megan McCain. I like you, Megan. You can call me and we can hang out if you'd like. Yeah, absolutely. Please hang out with Dan. I think she's pretty Megan. cool. She's pretty cool. Yes. So I, I don't remember that, but um, it's it's nice to have this opportunity to to celebrate. And one thing that I was thinking is, wouldn't it be nice? And um, I, I'm curious to know your your point okay. of view on this. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to have a Black History Month? Yes, um, I would totally agree with you. I think that, um, and I'm just speaking from things that I've observed the last probably, you know, five to six years when we talk about, you know, black progressives, you know, really getting out around equity, um, you know, giving our voice to everything that is supposed to be right in this country. That is the question that always comes up. It's like, why do we need Black History Month? Right. We should be celebrating Black history every day. Right. And so but once Black history is incorporated in traditional American history lessons, the truth about, about black, black history, history, then it's no longer necessary for us to have a, a month set aside to celebrate the lives and the people and the culture um, that, that create the Black American. And I'm going to be petty right yeah. now. Bring it on. And they gave us the shortest month. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I was like, don't be petty. I'm going to leave petty. it to Petty Betty over here. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, thank you um, uh, for giving us the shortest month. But here's what, how I take it is thank you for giving us the shortest month because we don't need all that extra baggage to celebrate. We know who we are and we can celebrate. And also we're so unique. We're the only month with 28 days. So Black History Month is the only month. With 28 days. And, and Everybody that, knows when it is. It's the day with the most less month, less days. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and, and that is him putting a positive spin on the idea of they give us the, the shortest month. So let's organize this okay. conversation a little bit. I, I think that we will, today we're going to celebrate um, some of our favorite memories. Yes. Some of our favorite figures in, in black history. Um, some of the our most important personal black heroes that we have. And maybe um, also our own personal black history story. All right. I think that sounds cool. I like that. Why don't we go to a break now? Okay. We're going to get our thoughts together. We're going to get organized. And we're going to come back and we're going to continue celebrating this beautiful month, the shortest month of the year, but the mightiest month of the year. <laughs> I was trying mightiest. to be more eloquent than that. Um, you know the black, you know the black anthem? I, I I do. I would love to hear you sing it. Okay. Before Actually, we go to no, break, no, please. No, I'm a, before oh. we go to break, I'm gonna sing it. We're gonna I'm gonna take us into break. All right, let's go. Here we go. No, no, no. It, it, no, we don't need. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Yupenda. How are you today? I'm doing great. But you know what, Yupenda? We need sponsors for this show. Absolutely, especially during this time where you're hearing our voices right now. This could be you. It could be them, but it's not. But it could be them. You can sell your product, your business, or your service. Or any dang thing else you'd like to sell. But first, you got to contact us. How can they get in touch with us, They Yupenda? can contact us at theupanddownshow at gmail.com. Is that all one word, you um, Oh Yes, it's one word. Theupanddownshow at gmail.com. So if you have a product, a business, or service, or any damn thing else you want to share with our <laughs> audience, please contact us at where? The up and down show at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, guys. Daniel. Yes, you did. You didn't like my singing, huh? I did. I actually thought your singing was honestly, <laughs> I, it was it was really beautiful. I promise you, I thought it was beautiful. Um, I I get actually a little bit disappointed in myself. I'm aware that there is a I think a lot of people who watch this maybe aren't aware that there is a black national, national anthem. anthem. So, but I don't know. I, it's not something that I ever, I ever learned. Yeah. Uh, it, it never. And what I don't like about the anthem, and I'm going to be honest yeah. with you, is it, no one sounds good singing it. You <laughs> sounded <laughs> remarkably okay. Um, <laughs> nobody sounds good singing it. Even like these beautiful black choruses, when they sing it, it is. I, I feel like it. It. Um, am I going to get in trouble? You for, are going to get. I'm going to get in trouble for. So I just want the audience. I'm putting a disclaimer out there. This is his white side. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this is this is the artistic side of me. I can you tell me one recording that actually moves you i can't think of a recording every i i really can't think of a recording and, and i think that is a point i think i wish that someone could m keep the same anthem but but reorchestrate it into a way that is digestible because uh, i can tell you everybody knows whitney houston singing the american national anthem yes right it is a great recording mahalia jackson singing um uh the the song about the sparrow right yeah. um eyes on the sparrow, on the sparrow. I, I think there are iconic performances of great music and there's not an iconic performance of the black anthem so maybe our audience can help us with that you know if you know of a chorus or choir or an individual that has sung the black national anthem that you like Send it to us. No, now. not that you like. Not that you like. That is iconic. Well, because well, I think it may we be can iconic all. Because I, I liked hearing you sing it, but I really my struggle with it. Why it never has resonated with me are the, it's so many words and the music is very diverse throughout the piece. It picks up. It goes slow. It like I, it's just a hard piece to memorize and know. I think it actually is. Um, and embodies the struggle okay. that we've been through. I, I buy that. Like, like, I I, that. so I get what you're saying. It goes up, it's down, it's slow, it's fast. It has this this vibrato to it, um, but it 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 really embodies the struggle. I think that's whoever created or wrote the wrote the the national anthem. And I don't know. I, maybe I should you know do a little bit more research. This is the white side of her coming out. <laughs> I I do have um, a little bit in me. Uh -huh. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, I, yes. I, 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 but I'm going to go and do a little history on that because yeah. I, it does make me when I hear people refer to it and sing it, and I can't even jump in and join along. It makes me, as someone who is half black, it makes me um, sad that well, I'm not able to celebrate that. Maybe next year on our Black History Show next year, we'll get you to sing it, and it can be iconic. Done, done. Ooh, I like that idea. That's my challenge to you, buddy. Done. All right. Okay. So, Yupenda, who are some of your favorite black 
heroes. Let's start with sort of the big ones, because then I also, you know, one of the things, I, there's a great um, episode of Blackish where um, the, the father and mother, they were um, celebrating all the great historical figures in black histories and, the young, and their kids were like, no, we want to like celebrate the guy next door, right? Yes. And so let's start with the great ones and then we're going to bring it to more um, tangible and, and accessible yes. um, heroes of ours as well. So who are some of our, one or some of your great black history So it, it goes without saying Martin Luther King. Amen. I Absolutely. mean, I think that he resonated not only with African-Americans, but with the conscious of white America. Like he was the first one to really touch the hearts to get them to be allies with us, in my opinion. Mm. I think we've always had white, white allies, but not to the extent that it was so out there and, and you saw it. Um, it, it. People weren't ashamed. They weren't hiding. Um, so for me, he actually represents bringing people together mm -hmm. and, and, and it's very purposeful. So I just remember, you know, Black History Month, you know, somebody got up and did Martin Luther King speech. Um, and so I think that... Um, you know, for me, he 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 represents that. Okay, hold on one second, Greg. You're actually saying something to us. What, what is our turn off the fan? Is it turning off the fan? Uh, we have the fan going on. That's what, we we are not on NBC, and I enjoy the fan in between takes. <laughs> so we will turn off the fan. Um, so absolutely, MLK. You know who one of my first heroes I mean, when I remember learning. First of all, MLK. We all had the MLK book when we were growing up. My yes. dad was very good um, in having black history, um, I keep seeing black history, black heroes around the house. So we had um, a Martin Luther King book. We had the Muhammad Ali book, book which yes. I love looking at the Muhammad Ali story. Um, but George Washington Carver. Yes. George was someone that, um, it was just someone who really touched me as a young kid who loved education. You know, he was such a, a, a brilliant man. And um, of course, he the stories with peanuts and all the yes. different creations that he made around peanuts. A but great innovator in, in science and yeah. science. Yes. Yeah. And, and I just remember he, him being someone that excited me and he, and he, even like his figure, I remember just, he was an older man. And I, I believe was, he, I think he was a slave. Um, or, at, at one point, at one his, point, yes. either was a slave or was a son of, of slaves. Um, and just what he was able to achieve back in a time when people of color, black men and women weren't even the education, attaining education and becoming a scientist and, and, and then making great inventions. It's just um, just really, really remarkable. Yeah, I, I remember learning about him. I mean, if you grew up in the time that we grew up, what was presented in black history, particularly in the textbooks were, again, those those figures that like George Washington Carver, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, but then there Booker was T. Washington, yeah, Booker T. Right. Washington, it just, but it didn't really talk about really like the inventors of the, um, uh, streetlight was a black man. You know, you didn't learn about those when we talk about practical right, and right, it's right. something you can connect to. Absolutely. Um, so I, I think from that perspective, you know, when we talk about where, why, why we have this month, but we really shouldn't have a month. We should be talking about black history every day. That, there is absolutely. learning that could be done every day. Blacks have made tremendous um, contributions contributions to America. Um, in fact, I was watching something this morning. Um, oh, I showed it to you with Cicely Tyson. It mm. was um, mm -hmm. Moses. Yes, they, the they woman, call her Moses, I think. Yes. They call her Moses. And the speech that she does, um, I, I don't know if it's the end of the movie or beginning of the movie. I've never saw the movie before. Yeah, I actually had not heard of it. I, I know the autobiography. Autobiography, autobiography, yeah, the autobiography <laughs> of Miss Jane Pittman, yes. which is what I thought you were watching at first, um, but I'd never seen this movie. Yes, and she just talked about um, the man yelled at her, "Go back to Africa," and she says, "Wait a minute, Mister, you stand up, don't sit back down. Wait a minute, Mister, that is funny. You tell me to go back to Africa. I'm not going back to Africa mm. because we built this country." You know, everything that you have was built by us, mm -hmm. you know, and I think and I, 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 I'm paraphrasing. Lord knows I'm a bad actress. Um, but basically she was she was saying that everything about this country is founded as a result of us being brought here 
in building this country. Right. We were part of the workforce. We were the resource used to build this this country. Um, yes. And so that that story was um, actually the the telling of Harriet Tubman. Yes. And so, uh, so to celebrate something more current, what do you think about this idea that Harriet Tubman may finally get on one Ooh. of our currencies? And did you oh hear, and God. did you hear what currency they're going to put her on? On the twenty dollar on bill. the twenty dollar bill. So oh, let's have girl. a debate about that. Oh, okay. Well, I, well, I, if we agree, we don't have to debate. Well, here's where I'm at with that. Okay. So uh, our last administration, Obama, I mean, the previous um, 44 Obama administration really pushed that forward and got a lot of ex- excitement around putting Harriet on the $20 bill. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the more and more I'm learning about reparation, reparations, I'm thinking, like, why can't we put energy into really having a plan for reparations that will give more value than to put Harriet, in my opinion, okay. than putting Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill. I'm really surprised. I, I thought the fact that she is a, um, African American hero, a female hero of, of our story of our struggle. I would have assumed that you as a black woman would have been, um, all about that symbolism because mm-hmm. I think oh, we, we are a country built on symbolism, right? The 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 Washington Monument and the Statue of Liberty. Um, these are, are things that uh, are everyone in the country are familiar with, and 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 I was gonna say bow to. We don't bow to it, but we we acknowledge it and we respect it. And so. I was surprised when they chose her just because she wasn't a politician, right? So, yes. and not everybody on the um, on the bills have been on presidents. Our currency. They're not all mm-hmm. dead presidents, mm-hmm. but they all are people that have been very closely um, connected to our our political system. political system. Mm-hmm. And so, I wouldn't say that she is that person. It would be awesome for them to put Barack Obama, although he's not dead. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, please. we don't I'll want Barack yes. Obama on anytime and, and, soon. And it's it's funny you you're saying that because in my mind I agree with you on that, like to have Barack on a our own on our currency. But I, I'm just thinking, like you know, let's make a plan around reparations. I mean, yeah. we we do so much in this country to make sure um, other groups are taken care of. Um, and I say that I mean, granted, we should have always created space for the indigenous people to have their land, you know, protected. So um, I, I'm curious, though, with the whole lot conversation and, and we're, we're, we're going someplace that we hadn't planned on, but reparations, what does that mean to you and what does that look like? Because I think a lot of times when people in the black community talk about reparations, it's financial um, and people get stuck on this idea. What is it? Um, Money. M- yeah. Was it a one a one quarter, a, a one acre, and a mule? Uh, right. Yes, yes. Everyone gets so stuck on land and money. Um, is is that what you think about with reparations? What what, what does think, reparations mean to you? I think reparations, in my opinion, it is a combination of not only making um, you know some type of financial economic investment, and I'm saying investment, not payment, an investment into the black community in my mind the process that by which that would would happen i don't know i i I don't have an idea i think that there needs to be some type of committee that is is brought together to actually look at what that investment that will help bring us um not trying to catch up to be you know to the table or in the race but to make sure we're even because we know this evidence have said based on the structures that has been set up for america We have always been pushed back because of the system. And so in my mind, how do we reinvest into African-American community that will bring us to the table Mm. with others? That's so in my mind, reparation speaks to that. I don't know the process um, and and I don't know exactly if it should be financial i i don't know but i do know we need reparations i actually will be bold enough and i might get in so this will be the episode we'll call this daniel gets in trouble um (laughs) because i actually will be bold enough to say it's not financial it's not i don't think individual people and households need to be financially compensated any longer i think we're way past that moment i think our as you're saying our systems need to change i think um for me reparations um is, is an issue of policy it's an issue of systemic change. I think what we're doing um, in Overtown in trying to support, not trying to, supporting 
black mm-hmm. entrepreneurs is an example of reparations if our government can get around right, that, right? Right, right? If our government, it's not a private foundation putting money towards elevating and making, um, allowing black uh, entrepreneurs to be competitive in the economic um, space. wonderful mm-hmm. space that's mm-hmm. going on in Miami. Yes. And black entrepreneurs just aren't benefiting at the, the same level as their white and Latino um, brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I think that's what, for me, reparations but, but, is. But, but I think that's part of, if, if there was a plan created, it looks like the reinvestment of economics into the black community. But, but, but I, the word about reinvestment that scares me is that it's money. And so if we give a billion dollars for reparations for the black experience into this program, then we've, we've done what we've done. And then that money gets spent down and nothing has changed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I get, I just, I want to break free of this idea that it's a financial investment. I think it's much bigger than that. I, it's I much agree bigger with you. I agree that. with you. And, and I'm going to go back to say like, there needs to be some type of committee policy group that comes together to this, really identify what could reparations look like for African Americans in this community? That includes a a a, a very diverse plan mm-hmm. that will be sustainable for the Black community con- that can continue to be at the table, continue to compete, and, and not be, you know, pushed back. Right. There's. It's all about the equity thing. You know, yes. there was recently there was. Um, it made me think of this, and I'll, I can share this quickly before we go to our next break. Is there was a. Um, the I think it was the mayor of Paris who just got uh, fined. Did you hear about this? No, I didn't. She just got fined very recently for hiring too many women in leadership positions within the Parisian government. Really? And, and, and so she's she's I, might, I don't know if she's the first mayor. She might be the first female mayor, but um, she had hired all these women um, in throughout her time in office in leadership positions, and the Parisian government actually find her a hundred thousand dollars or francs or whatever euros i don't know what it was it was over a hundred thousand american dollars is what it translated to um for doing that and she went to town on them basically saying listen we have we have parity laws that are in place to help women elevate now what i didn't understand um but if you think about it um in europe women have much greater um positions in um things like in leadership Mm -hmm. and government and all but there are other places where they aren't and so she actually pushed back and they ended up dropping all charges against her i need to look that up i didn't know that just how i just heard that this week and it makes me think of this whole issue i think a lot of people start to get really uncomfortable now that we're talking about investing in um black businesses and we're talking about hiring black executives it's like well what about the white folk and i i think there needs to be a period of time where we I'm going to say over in a way that it looks to some people. We over invest in hiring and putting people in leadership positions just to work out that equity yes, issue, yes, right? Yes. And it's going to feel uncomfortable to other communities. Oh, absolutely. Because that people, is what reparations people is. Always, it always go back to, well, what about me? Right. So, and, and also, what, what about me and what am I giving up? Yeah, right. right. I think that is the thing when you talk about all the tension yes. between black and in white. Life. It's they about what they're something. giving up. Giving up. And we have to recognize that. And we yes. have to make them co- not comfortable with it, but understand, you know, we're not here to take, take. your life away. No. We're not trying to be elite over you. Yes. And we have to watch ourselves for that. But we are trying to fix what have historically has been done to make that imbalance exist. Yes. Okay. So, so when wh- we come back, we're going to celebrate a little bit more. Yes. We're going to do some yes. celebrations. That was good, though. That, that actually wasn't as crazy as the first segment. No, <laughs> not at all. All right. We're getting this, guys. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey guys, this is Daniel from the Up and Down Show with Daniel and you, Pendo. And if you are listening to this, that means you like us. You really like us. And because you really like us, we like you. In fact, we love you. And we would love to have you become part of the Up and Down family. Do you have a business, product, or service you'd like to advertise? Or how about a hot uncle you'd like to set either of us up with? If so, contact us at the up and down show at gmail.com. That's all one word, the up and down show at gmail.com. And let's talk. But don't take too long because these commercial spots are hot. They're flying off the shelves. Thanks for listening to us at the up and down show. So 
uh, Yupenda, I'm um, I'm really enjoying this. I'm enjoying getting to know uh, your thoughts and loves and feelings around this um, topic of uh. Black history, and um, I really curious about modern day heroes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I surprisingly, when I think about modern day heroes, I, I, I tend to lean to more of the entertainment. Okay. That's interesting. Um, just because entertainment is very much a way to get messages out mm-hmm. about our people. And um, one person um, is remarkably, he's made more of an impact than I believe he even knew but it's Nipsey Hussle. He passed away. He was shot mm-hmm. um, two years ago in front of his business. And I want to say, was, was it Crenshaw? I'm not sure, if, but it was in, in, in California. But his, his um, life and the way he lived it was all about the community and reinvesting in the community, businesses and the people and mentoring and, you know, um, unfortunately, um, you didn't know that while he was living, but after he passed away, I just have such a great respect for what he was doing. And, and he was doing things that people had no idea. Like he was living the life of being a modern day, um, you know, I, I'm going to just venture to say he was probably more of a Malcolm X mm-hmm. than a Martin Luther King. Early Malcolm X. Yes. 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 Um, And just the way. What what is that distinction for those who don't understand the distinction? Well, you know, uh, Malcolm X wasn't passive. You know, he you know, he was, you know, Martin Luther King was more passive. You know, Kumbaya, let's bring people along. Um, He was Malcolm X like, we're going to do this. We're 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 being active. We're going to, you know, demand. Mm -hmm. And and his way of doing it was like, okay, this needs to happen in my community. So I'm going to make it happen. So you're saying Nipsey had the same. Yes. Belief about I'm going to make this happen in my community. (laughs) Can I make like a little bit of funny is anytime anybody says Nipsey hustle, you think I was thinking Nipsey, Nipsey Russell, Russell yes. with, and Geraldine. Oh girl, right? I was like, that's my yes. mind always goes there first. And I'm like, Oh no, no, they're talking about the other gentleman. Yes. Um, I think that's a, that's a wonderful one. Uh, you know, I, what about I you? for me, I, I, a couple names are like floating in my head. There's one. I always tell a story of when I was a kid in, um, in high school applying for colleges, I applied for a black I actually, it was a Black History um, Month uh, scholarship, and okay. they asked for you to write about your your um, hero, your Black hero. And I didn't want to be typical, right? So I didn't want to say Martin Luther King or George Washington Carver, or, and so I chose Danny Glover. <laughs> 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 Needless to say, I didn't win the prize. <laughs> you think? But for me, Danny Glover was someone as a as a young man who was just beginning to understand what acting was that I just gravitated to. He was huge in the eighties. It was right after he had done um, the Color Purple, and he was in um, the movies with uh, with Mel with Mel, Mel Gibson. Gibson. Uh, and I just, I just, I, I idolized him, but I also respected him because he was my Sidney Poitier. Yes. Yes. Right. And so he was one name. And then there's also and I know this is going to sound again. This is the episode Daniel gets in trouble is that um, I recently watched the HBO special. It's awesome. Oh, yes. Uh, with um, Tiger Woods. And I will tell I you, you I, say something else. Uh, Tiger Woods. And what I didn't appreciate with Tiger Woods, because, you know, of course, all the controversy and the women and the, all the arrest and all that uh, uh, in the later part of his career. But he was a trailblazer. Yes. When you and I were little children, he was hitting golf balls. Yes. He was our age, which I, I forget. Like, we, he is our peer. And he was hitting golf balls and he was blazing racial trails in a time that we weren't even thinking of yes. those and his father with all of his flaws had this vision of tiger breaking down racial barriers yes. in this country and i believe he did y- 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 i know i know and you watch yes. this you watch this document and what it did for me is it re it reframed his position in history regardless of what you want to say about him as a man it reframed him as a human being and um it was remarkable to me. And yeah, then, we, we should probably talk more about that in another um, another podcast. Episode, episode sure. Yeah, just because um, I I do know what you're talking about. And I, his father, Earl, 
um, was incredible with his vision. He, 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 you're right. He had a vision that his son will be the next coming to breaking down the racial divide. So I'm going to leave it at that. So those, that's great. And then we have, of course, young Amanda Gorman. I think she's our most, the, the current one, like everybody's talking about. I think she's making history. Yeah, she absolutely is making history. She is, um, she's overcome a lot and she has brought a spirit um, in this country with her poems that, you know, when you think about it, when you think of poets, you don't think of, about young African-Americans. I, I, well, you, you, do, think, you of think of Maya, you Maya, Maya Angelou, Angelou. And, and you think of uh, Langston Hughes, Hughes and you but think you of don't people think, from the like, past. Right? Like, like for the past, but you don't think of young ones. Uh, absolutely. So, no, yes. it, it, it's beautiful. She definitely is going to be trailblazing. So, you Yupenda, give me one of your just most... Favorite memory connected to whether it be heroes or being a black woman in this country, um, just just a favorite memory moment in your own life about being black. Just connected <laughs> to this topic, it could be anything. I, I mean, it, um, you know, I I think that um, you know the memory I have when it comes to specifically black history, family wise, my father was. Um, my father was a very light skinned man, man. He was probably two shades lighter than you mm -hmm. and you got makeup on. So probably three shades lighter. Than you. I don't have makeup on. <laughs> I don't wear makeup. I don't wear makeup. Just for the show. Usually. <laughs> but he... <laughs> That's right. You just got me back for the gray hair yes, comment a few episodes yes, exactly. back. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> my, my father was a very light skinned um, black male and he really, really was um, he, he was challenged in his own community because he wasn't dark enough. And then he wasn't, you know, his white his lightness did not, you know, wasn't enough for him to uh, pass, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, and he never wanted to pass, but he, he struggled with that all his life of, about being black enough. And so when I think of black history, I think about my father growing up. Um, we were um, Muslims growing up. He got the family in the faith of Muslim. And I just remember the, the, the blackness of being part of the mosque the mosque, mm -hmm. which is, you know, the religious, the church that Muslims go to and the community. And I, I mean, I can appreciate it now. I didn't appreciate it when I was younger. By no means, I didn't appreciate selling, you know, the the, the paper. I forget the name of the paper that would be on a corner. Um, and, you know, I appreciate the bean pies. I, we were vegans. You know, we ate healthy. But there was a community. It was a connected community of blackness. Mm. So I appreciated that. Um I can appreciate it now. I didn't really understand it because you don't know until you get older what your parents are trying to teach you. But my, my dad was really into, you know, hardcore blackness. Mm. Um, and he fought hard about being black, you know, always proven that he was black enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that to me, you know, black history is definitely my father. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um I can't even be funny. I might, I'm typically would make, make a joke at this point, but I, I don't want to step on that. Cause that, that was yeah, that's beautiful. I didn't know I was going to go there. I, I honestly, but when I, when I really sit and reflect on black history, I, my father is very present with me. And you know, it makes me think of, um, you're going to make fun of me for this, but big mama and granddaddy. I'm not going to make fun. And, well, you, yeah. And, I make so, fun of you other times about big mama and, and granddaddy. granddaddy. But I actually walked down the stairs today because you were making breakfast. Yeah. And I walked down as granddaddy today. You I was did. like, mm, girl, that's, that smell good, girl. What you making in there, girl? <laughs> you, you sure did. You can't. Hey, what you doing? That smell good and when I there. think about big mama and granddaddy and the fact that they live, I tell people all the time that I am the product of just one generation later, I um, my grandparents picked cotton in Mississippi. Yeah. They raised 16 children. Yes. All of their children graduated from high school. And I now, and I went to a, an Ivy League school and I've traveled the world yes. and I have a wonderful job and I have great friends and, and I am blessed with health. And I, I you know, I, I like the, the things that I succeed in is everything based off all the sacrifices they made. Yes, yes. 
with that back-breaking work of picking cotton, mm -hmm. making, I think he told me at one point he was making $13 a week raising 16, 16 children. Kids. I can't imagine that. And so that's, that is one my hero. And when I think about the pride of when I learned their struggles and their stories and how they came up and what they persevered, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And it pisses me off. I don't mean to turn any negative part on it, but it pisses me off when I find younger generations who don't understand how close, close they are, are. Th from that struggle. Yes, yes. And when yes. they're out there slinging dope and they're out there, you know, not working and applying themselves and, and looking for that check and all the things that we, that plague our community. Yes. And they are so close from the generation that made it possible for them to st sit on that corner without a job yes. and bitch. Yes, yes. I, I mean, I don't think you would get in trouble for saying that. I think we, anybody who, who has an appreciation and I say have an appreciation. You can't appreciate something you don't know. So for those individuals that may be on the corner slinging and, and, and doing what they, they're doing, I do have a empathy and heart for them because I work in community. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and, and part of that, in, in my opinion, is how do we get that those individuals to have an appreciation, to understand you're right. We are this close. You know, it, it's not it's a generation remove, you know, and you should have more of an appreciation for where we are as a race, um, which and, makes me think well, there are two things we wanted to talk about in this episode. But I think we've run out of time yes. um, is we were going to talk about one night in Miami, yes. which I think is so relevant to this. And maybe we can hold that off and talk about that another episode, yes. because I think the history of that is bigger than just Black History Month. Um, I was just moved by that. So, well, well why don't I challenge us for that? Because I said I think we should bring up the whole Tiger Woods yep. documentary, okay. it'd be good to connect those two because okay. there's something similar that I would like to discuss as it relates to that. If so, that's okay. so we're going to come back to that. And then another one also connected to what you just shared. Um, and, and these will be my ups, actually. How about we do it yeah, this way? That, do, these uh, are my ups. So my ups are two movies that I've recently watched. Okay. Um, the first one is I just shared One Night in Miami. It's a wonderful movie. Um, I will be honest that it's not the, um, it's not the, best movie as far as pacing goes but the story of having four important men in the 60s 70s um black figures you had muhammad ali um Ma uh, malcolm x you had um jim brown and who am i forgetting who's the third person uh muhammad ali jim oh and sam cook sam so cook. you have these four gentlemen and they come together one night in miami true story and um you get to learn a lot about their lives so it's a wonderful movie you can catch that on i believe netflix um no yes. no no you can catch that on hulu or Prime, catch it on Prime. Um, and then the other Thank one, you, the other one is um, Crack. It's another also new documentary that just came out that talks about the epidemic of I crack. Seen that. It's really good. It's, it's on, on, on HBO and it's on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank Greg, you, Greg. For the, the nods. Um, <laughs> but I just watched that yesterday, two days ago, and it tells the story that we all know about how first the crack epidemic took over black communities, but then it ties how the government was part of that story. Again, things we'd heard, but I'd never seen a documentary outline it so Ooh, both of I'm those are great that. and we will then maybe talk about those movies when we come how about you what are, what's your up so my up is an app <laughs> an <laughs> app right. it is called key with amazon so if you have the um digital um garage door opener by chamberlain amazon has connected their app for delivery okay. with chamberlain it's called key OK, and so whenever you have a delivery, instead of it being delivered to your front door, you actually can have them utilize the app to open your garage and put your, um, you know, your goods in whatever you, you purchase in safely. And I love it because I can order and it, I love Amazon. So I'm getting, you know, stuff every other day to my house. But if I'm not here, I don't have anything to worry about because they can open my garage, put my package in, and it closes right after. Wow. And you're scared. I know you. You don't. You don't like it. I am such an old man. That sounds amazing, you Penda. <laughs> I but am such an old man that, that that sounds terrifying to me because now they have everything in your garage available. And I know, okay, they know you're opening. They, uh, uh, you get out of my garage. No, I'm not. A, I mean, here's the deal about it, too. If, if, if you know anything about Amazon, they do the tracking and everything. And, and their people, you don't, you don't always, you don't necessarily hear stories about 
Amazon workers still in packages. Mm-hmm. Just, I just I had a couch delivered and I had to go downstairs with something while they were in my apartment. <laughs> I've never sweated more. I was pushing <laughs> buttons in that elevator trying to get back upstairs. I was like, what are these motherfuckers doing upstairs in my apartment? <laughs> you are I turned so... around the corner and they're like, oh, we're done. I was like, let me see your pockets. <laughs> anyway, I, if you have Chamberlain, and I think they it works with other garage opener, digital the garage openers, download um, key from Amazon and it can help you keep your packages safe. Mm -hmm. And put on that camera in your garage. Yes. Thank you all for joining us for Black History Month, Yupenda. Yes. Happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. Yes. Bye. Bye Bye. guys. We'll see you soon. 